We're joined by James Dorsey, award-winning scholar and journalist with a different perspective on the Middle East. James, good morning and welcome to the program on Radio Islam. Good morning and best wishes in, on this almost last day of the year. Mm, thank you and all the best to you also. Uh, James, thank you. We start, to, we start off with uh, Jordan's king warning of red lines in Jerusalem as the most nationalist religious government in Israeli history takes office. Indeed, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is again Prime Minister of Israel, this time um, ahead of a government which basically fulfills everybody's worst fears, or most many people's worst fears. One of the big issues is the Temple Mount, the Haram al-Sharif, of course. Uh, the Jordanian king this week and his relations with Netanyahu have been strained for quite some time warned in a CNN interview that there were red lines. What he was referring to was a promise by the new um, National Security Minister of Israel, Itamar Ben-Gvir, who's a man who uh, basically favors annexation of the West Bank, a Jewish takeover of the Haram al-Sharif, uh, and in the past has been convicted on racism charges and alleged support of a terrorist organization which was a right-wing Jewish racist group headed by Rabbi Meir Kahane, he has pledged that one of his first deeds would be to visit the um, uh, the, te- uh, the Temple Mount, the Haram al-Sharif. Uh, if you think back to 2000, it was a visit by then uh, Minister Ariel Sharon to, uh, to the holy site, uh, that sparked the Intifada, the Palestinian Intifada in 2000. So that's what uh, King Abdullah of Jordan's red lines are, and we'll see what happens. Yes. And then let's move on. Uh, Syrian defense uh, chiefs hold landmark meeting in Russia. Indeed. So uh, Russia has been pushing for quite some time for reconciliation between uh Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and the Syrian leader Bashar al-Assad. Keep in mind that Turkey was one of the most fervent opponents of uh, Bashar al-Assad. He supported the uh, rebellion against uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad. He allowed people, uh, rebel fighters, to cross the border back and forth. He opened the doors to almost four million Syrian refugees uh, who are in Turkey, uh, and he demanded uh, the replacement of Bashar al-Assad. Uh, now we're in a situation where you have Turkish troops in the northern part of um, of Syria. Uh, their aim really is to crush any attempt at some form of Kurdish autonomy, Kurdish expression of, uh, of uh, national identity, uh, Turkey has threatened that it wants to uh, invade northern Syria and create a 30-kilometer buffer zone. In that context, the Russians have been pressuring uh, the Turks. Uh, over the last several months, Erdogan has said that he would be willing to uh, forge a reconciliation process. The reason why he's willing to do so is that the upcoming elections in 2023 – which are iffy for Erdogan because of it, primarily because of his economic performance. But bridging that gap with uh, Bashar al-Assad is going to prove to be very difficult over the issue of return of refugees, over the issue of um, uh, integration of Kurdish fighters into the Syrian military. All of these issues are hot-button issues that are not going to be easy to resolve. Yes, but what it does show is that uh, enemies are not permanent in politics. Neither are friends. <laughs> yes, certainly. Uh, Morocco breaks rank to sell tanks to Ukraine. Indeed. So Morocco has T-72 uh, Russian-built tanks. Uh, those are now being refurbished by a Czech company and being uh, delivered to Ukraine. It's the first of first Muslim country, first Arab country, first African country to actually uh, give Ukraine not just humanitarian support, but military support. 
uh, and that positions, of course, Morocco in a very different way, certainly in terms of its relationships with Europe, as well as its relationship with the United States. It almost puts it, not, or, or to some degree, puts it on par with um, Qatar, which has been uh, very cooperative with the United States, even if it's maintained its relations with with Moscow at the same time. Uh, reconciliation talks between Saudi Arabia and Iran stall? They've been stalling for some time, as primarily as a result of two factors. One is uh, the um, change of government, the election result in Iraq. And you now have a prime, and Iraq was sort of the mediator and the, uh, the host of five rounds of talks between Saudi Arabia and Iran. The new prime minister and the new government is a government that uh, is formed by uh, political parties associated with Iran, and therefore its uh, independence and its uh, neutrality is in question as far as the Saudis are concerned. Moreover, the uh, mass protests that are now in their fourth month, very sustained anti-government protests in Iran, uh, have led to a further uh, uh, aggravation in Saudi-Iranian relations. The Saudis are waiting to see what happens in Iran, uh, although nobody really expects the um, a change of regime. But at the same time, the Iranians are accusing the Saudis alongside the United States and Israel of having fermented and instigated these protests. And so the prospects of the two countries coming together and finding a modus vivendi um, is unlikely at this point. On top of that, of course, you now have a hardline anti-Iranian. Israel was always anti-Iran, but this is a, a government that's particularly hardline when it comes to Iran. And you've already had uh, now those that was the outgoing defense minister, but nonetheless saying that there could be an attack on Iranian nuclear facilities within an Israeli attack within the next two to three years. We'll watch out for that. Uh, James, thank you very much for the update this morning and we wish you all the best uh, for the uh, New Year period. Thank you and I wish you and your listeners everything they wish for themselves for 2023. See you next year. Absolutely. We'll see you talk in the next year. All the best. Well, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, that was James Dorsey. Listeners can sc- subscribe to James' newsletter and blog, The Turbulent World of Middle East Soccer. You can also visit his website, uh, jamesdorsey.net. Stay tuned to Sabah al-Muslim. Stay tuned to Sabah al-Muslim.